As of today, you can officially buy the Samsung Galaxy S9. It's an excellent smartphone, but it's so similar to its predecessor in appearance that you might miss options, both new and old, if you go into it blind. So join me for a look at my favorite, less talked about Galaxy S9 features, brought to you by IOTI. Let's kick things off with everyone's favorite whipping boy, Bixby. Look, I'm not a big fan of Samsung's virtual assistant. I'd much prefer to replace it with Google Now using apps like this one. But it's kind of hacky and it can impact performance and battery life. So if you decide to just live with Bixby, well, first of all, it's no longer as painful as it once was. And also there are a couple things you can do to make it even better. The first is to disable Bixby's button in the Bixby settings screen, so you're not always bringing up the side panel when you accidentally press it. What's smart about this is that it only disables the single press function. You can still push and hold the key to talk to Bixby voice, and that's actually pretty useful for quick actions like asking for the forecast and setting reminders or alarms. Oh, and if you do use your phone for alarms and you have a harder time getting up in the morning, like I do, Bixby can actually help here. Go to the alarm clock settings and enable Bixby briefing. When your alarm goes off, your phone will read you the time, tell you the forecast, and fill you in on all the horrible stuff that's happened since you went to sleep. It's going to be a windy day. Here's a roundup of today's news provided by Google. Daniel's lawyer says some alleged incidents took place. My final Bixby tip can be summed up in three words. Use quick commands. You can build an if-then sequence for so many phone functions that it's just nuts. This example from Samsung Health is a great illustration of why people don't like Bixby. It's a recommended command that lets you say the word coffee to automatically add a cup of coffee to your daily food tracking. But when I do it, I get this. Now, I'm sure this guy is a fine musician, but this isn't what I was going for. Where this flips to something good is in correction. If Bixby gets something wrong, you can teach it by tapping here. And when it works as intended, you've got a pretty handy shortcut for controlling the S9 by voice. Use it to go to YouTube and subscribe to the Mr. Mobile. The second feature I want to hit is frequently missed for a reason. It just launched on the same day this video did. See, Samsung has had these optical sensors on the back of its phones since about 2014, and until now, they've measured things like your heart rate and blood oxygen level. Well, the S9 takes it a step further with blood pressure monitoring as well. You need to download an app, which only works in the States, called MyBP Lab, and agree to opt into a study being run by the University of California on the health effects of stress. Once you share some basic info and you agree to share your anonymized data with the University of California, you just put your finger on the sensor and follow the instructions. Now, optical blood pressure sensors are nowhere near as accurate as the cuff you'll find at your doctor's office, so this is the very definition of early days for a feature like this, and I'm sure we'll see more apps take advantage of it in the coming months. Next up, a feature that's only new because I've basically been ignoring it for the past four years. See, here's how much I typically use the edge screen during a Samsung review. Raise the phone into frame, swipe through a bunch of the out-of-box options, say something like, oh, I don't know, you might find it handy for single-handed situations. Boom, done for another year. Well, this time around, I forced myself to use the edge screen for about two weeks, and I sort of get it now. Some really specific features are very handy to have just to swipe away, like, for example, the calculator panel. But the thing that I found myself really appreciating was the most basic one, Apps Edge. It's kind of like having a mini home screen that you can summon so you can hop to another app without ever having to take the intermediate step of actually going to the home screen. Download some other panels and set them up the way you want, and you can put all of your most commonly used stuff into the Edge screen, pretty much anyway. That leaves room on your home screen for larger widgets. Or you can just go super minimal and appreciate your wallpaper. I'll save you the question in the comments. This one and most of mine come from an app called Backdrops. Oh, and pro tip, once you get used to the flow of it, you don't need that tab disrupting the clean lines of the glass. So hop into the settings, max out the transparency, and presto. A gesture accessible interface that's invisible when you're not using it. 
On the subject of gestures, one thing I was about to complain about is that there's no shortcut to drop the notification shade, besides the fingerprint scanner trackpad trick. But then I watched a video from the tech chap, who pointed out an option that I not only missed on the S9, but on the updated S8 as well. Go into your home screen settings and toggle Quick Open Notification Panel. And just like that, you can swipe down anywhere on the home screen to deploy it. Welcome to the party, Samsung. It's great to have you. A few short feature shoutouts as we close things out. My custom logo on the always on display, easy. Settings, lock screen and security, clock and face widgets. Also, a lot of folks have been asking about this lock screen trim. Well, it's an animated wallpaper from the Samsung theme store called S8 Exclusive Colorful Marquee, but be warned, it only works on the lock screen. You can get a touch of that edge lighting every time you get a notification, though. Just go to Display, Edge Screen, Edge Lighting, and you can choose from a whole bunch of color, transparency, and animation options. Giving users this much choice has been a staple of Samsung's for a long time. And if you want to relive some of the old ones, they're still here. Hop into Settings, Advanced Features, Multi-Window, and you can turn on Pop-Up View, which lets you shrink apps to smaller, resizable windows that you can keep visible when working in other apps. And finally, how could I forget AR Emoji? Oh, right, we hate that. Yeah, no, we're, let's not do that. Okay. And if you do, hey, I'm not here to yuck your yum. I'll link you to a good video covering it from a buddy of mine down in the comments. Another Galaxy S9 perk is wireless charging. And while that's not exactly new, this charger is. This is the Ion Wireless Plus fast charging pad from today's sponsor, IATI. It charges quickly with up to 10 watt output, keeps things cool with an air gap around back, and lets you charge another device with an additional USB port. It's also covered in fabric, which is a sweet and soft change of pace. It's available for pre-sale today. Hit the link in the description and use discount code IOTI15 to get 15% off. But you've got to do it before March 30 to hit that discount, so hit it now and tell them Mr. Mobile sent you. Folks, if you got your S9 today or you're running updated software on an S8 or Note 8, tell me your favorite feature, new or old, in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your fellow Samsung owners and encourage them to subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube and Instagram. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.